Today on Munson Made This, we are going green. Ryan Little. <laughs> In honor of St. Patrick's Day, I have two recipes for you that are entirely green. I'm going to be making for you a really fast, quick, easy split pea soup in the Instant Pot, and I'm going to show you how to make one of my favorite childhood desserts that my mom called green stuff. So stick around and I'll show you how to make them. First green recipe I'm going to be making for you today is my favorite soup from when I was a child, split pea soup. Uh, of course, my mom, when she always made it, she always used ham and different things like that, but we're gonna be making it entirely vegan and very quickly in the Instant Pot. Uh, I've got all my things prepped and ready to go here. I have garlic, I have a piece of celery or one stalk of celery chopped up, half of an onion. This is one small carrot. I was out of orange carrots, so I have purple carrots some liquid smoke to give it that smoky, hammy flavor, some red pepper flakes to add a bit of spice, some fresh thyme leaves, better than bouillon to make the soup base, and then for some added texture, sorry, wrong one, uh, some added texture, I have some porcini mushrooms, and then uh, final spice is going to be some bay leaf. We're just gonna add all that to the Instant Pot with six cups of water and one pound of our split peas and we're gonna have soup. So let's start adding it. I have already placed six cups of filtered water into my Instant Pot, and to that, I'm just gonna throw in the ingredients. You could, if you wanted to develop flavors a little bit more, uh, saute these in the bottom before you added the water, but it's all gonna cook the same. So uh, I'm adding about a half of an onion, chopped. Again, that celery, just one stalk of celery, thinly chopped, one carrot, couple of sprigs of thyme leaves. I'll remove the stem at the end uh, as well. I'm going to be adding about two bay leaves in here. If I can find two good ones. Uh, about two bay leaves in there. Again, those will be removed at the end as well. I'm gonna add just a bit of red pepper flake for the spice. Just got this new garlic press, so I'm gonna try to use this to add a few cloves of garlic in. about three cloves right there. I think I'm gonna add one more. I've had different models in the past. This definitely isn't my favorite, but seems to be working pretty well. Okay, so that's about four cloves of garlic. Stirring that together. Uh, I'm going to be adding my pound of split peas. Now I bought these in the bulk section and I had some random red lentils laying around so they made their way into here. But this is one pound of green split peas. And uh, if you're making this soup, you can kind of add any of the other vegetables and seasonings you want, but the ratio is essentially six cups of water to one pound of split peas. The last things I'm going to add, just about a teaspoon of liquid smoke. You don't want to overdo this and then two tablespoons of our Better Than Bouillon. This is the no chicken flavor. And the reason I'm adding two tablespoons is that we have six cups of water and it's basically one teaspoon uh, of this bouillon to season one cup of water. So that's why we're adding two tablespoons. And the water is a little bit cool so it might be difficult to get it out of here, but. That's it for the ingredients. All right, so let's move this over towards the outlet. I'm actually gonna add a bit of cracked black pepper as well before I turn it on. And you'll wanna taste this after it's finished cooking just to make sure your seasonings are right. I'm not adding any more salt because that Better Than Bouillon is pretty salty. So I don't really wanna add too much now. I'll do that on the other side. So putting the lid on making sure that it is set so that we'll create pressure. And then I'm going to plug it in. 
This needs to go for 18 minutes. Easiest way for me to get to that is the poultry button, which sets it to 15. Add, wrong direction. Add three more minutes, 18 minutes. It's set and I'm ready to make my next green dish. Just kidding, I forgot one ingredient here. Uh, it is my porcini mushrooms. Uh, I have, I don't know here, probably once I chop it up, it's gonna be about two tablespoons or so worth. Uh, and I'm adding these to just give it a bit of a chewy texture. Uh, again, when I had it as a kid, there were like pieces of ham and things like that in there. So this just is gonna add a bit of kind of that same mouth feel, a little bit of just a kind of a little chew to it. So I'm chopping these up. Yeah, there's gonna be some little shreds and things like that, which is fine. Uh, it's just gonna add a little bit more umami to the uh, soup. So just slightly chopping these. And my Instant Pot hasn't come up to temperature yet, so it's pretty easy for me to just open it up. Throw these inside. Give it another quick stir. Turn the lid, make sure it's still set to pressure, and it's as if nothing ever happened. So, all right, now I'll be back in just a moment to make the next green dish. I don't know how many of you have had this happen to you, but uh, you have a recipe from childhood that maybe your mom or dad or your grandparents made and you loved it and you asked them for the recipe one day, maybe it's chocolate chip cookies or something like that and you asked them for the recipe one day uh, and you think it's this family secret, but it turns out it's just the recipe on the box of ingredients. That's basically what happened to me here. Uh, as a child, my mom always made this salad, uh, dessert salad called Green Stuff uh, and it was just known as Green Stuff. Uh, as I grew up, I learned that it actually has a name and it's called Watergate Salad and the recipe is actually printed on the box of Jell-O Instant Pistachio Pudding. So that's what we're gonna be making today, but I fully veganized the recipe so that you can take it to any of your St. Patrick's Day vegan parties or surprise any of your non-vegan friends with this delicious dessert salad. So let's throw these ingredients together. First ingredient is a can of crushed pineapple, 20 ounces, uh, keeping the juice. The next ingredient is, as I showed you, the Jell-O Instant Pistachio Pudding. This is accidentally vegan, although it's not necessarily the health healthiest thing for you. This is a dessert, it's a sometimes food. So uh, go ahead and add a package of the pistachio pudding to the pineapple. And I'm just gonna mix these together and you'll see immediately why this was called green stuff. And you just kinda wanna get the Jell-O and the pineapple mixed together before you add the other ingredients so that you can make sure that that pudding mix is completely dissolved. One of the ingredients in the original recipe that is not vegan uh, are the marshmallows. So you wanna find this brand Dandies. Um, this is available, I found it at Whole Foods. You can find it at natural grocers. Uh, just make sure that the uh, there's no gelatin in the marshmallows that you use. So I need a cup of these. It's okay if you have a little bit more than a cup. And then I have these unsalted, dry, toasted pecan pieces. And I'm going to use just about a half a cup of these, which is what I have left in my bag. And I'm going to stir these together. Doesn't necessarily look that appetizing, especially with this unnatural green color, but I promise there's something that comes in with the combination of these ingredients that really just is greater than the sum of its parts. The last ingredient, which again needs a vegan swap out, is the whipped cream. I'm gonna be using this so delicious dairy-free cocoa whip, and you need a half tub of this. Um, obviously, I've already tried one of these uh, recipes recently, so I have half left here. I just wanna put half that container in here, and then fold it in. You wanna be a little bit cautious here not to beat it too hard so that it keeps a little bit of the airiness of the whipped cream. Um, one thing I found in the grocery store yesterday is this cocoa, coconut whipping cream. I've used the same brand's sweetened condensed coconut milk before, which is really great. Uh, I just wanted to make this recipe a little bit easier, so I used the pre-made whip, but this might be something to try. Uh, could be a good alternative if you can't find the other one. So, finish folding this in. 
And this is pretty much it for the recipe. It's going to have to set up in the fridge for about one hour. And that's it. Still has a beautiful green color, slightly tamed down by the cocoa whip. And it's ready to go out of the fridge in an hour. My green stuff for my Watergate salad is finished. It's set up for an hour and I use an ice cream scoop to place it into this bowl to try to make it look a little bit nicer. Uh, it's not the most gorgeous dish, but it sure is delicious. Uh, for a finishing touch, I'm just gonna add a few marshmallows around. If you had some more of the pecans, which I ran out, uh, I think it would be nice to kind of garnish the top. This is a pretty large serving, uh, more for our glamour shot purposes, but that's pretty much it. It's ready to go. Uh, the recipe easily doubles as well. If you find that that wouldn't be enough to serve the party, uh, double the, the recipe and uh, it's good to go. So there it is. All right, it is time for the taste test. This has such a beautiful like mint color, uh, even though it's not mint, I guess you could say it's a pistachio color. Uh, really nice texture. Takes me right back to childhood. It's got this really sweet like pistachio flavor, but then there's the acidity from the pineapple. Um, you get the fluffy bits from the marshmallow little crunches from the pecan, which kind of ground out the sweetness a little bit. It's so good. Make this just for yourself. Enjoy a little bit of decadence. Make it for a party. Uh, perfect for any green day you're hosting. So yeah, it's delicious. 18 minutes is up and it is time to quick release this Instant Pot. Pressure has been released, the little Dealy Bob here has gone down. Let's open it up. Just gonna stir it up. Looks amazing. So if I see the bay leaves, I'm just gonna take those out. Stems from the thyme. Most of the uh, little leaves have come off. And it looks great. This is a slightly thinner soup. If you did want to make it thicker, you could add just five uh, cups of water, but I prefer it a little bit thinner. It does tend to thicken up uh, over time a bit also. All right, that looks like all of my bay leaves. Let's dish it up. It smells incredible. And there we go, just clean up the edges before I take my glamour shots, but it smells incredible. Today's recipes were all about going green, making green food, maybe even saving a bit of green. Combined, these two recipes probably cost about five or six bucks with all the ingredients. The dessert we made was a little bit more processed using packaged ingredients, but it's a great way to serve omnivores and it's a great way to make a really super easy, fast dessert. Not the healthiest, but definitely super delicious. On the other hand, we had this really inexpensive, super green and healthy made from scratch split pea soup. I bought the split peas in bulk, added carrots, onions, all these natural ingredients. Uh, pretty much everything could be purchased without any plastic or any excess waste uh, compared to what we had here. Cooks up in the Instant Pot super quick comes out really earthy, really delicious, really hearty. Um, I use the six cups of water compared to, like I said, a five, which would give you a heartier soup. Um, but I sort of like the looseness that you get here with the six cups. Um, I tasted it also, I don't really need any extra seasoning. What I put in there in the beginning is perfect right now. So it's so good, so full of umami. The porcini mushrooms really add a lot to this not only in terms of texture, but they really help the flavor deepen. This is definitely my favorite soup from when I was a kid, and it's so nice to be able to make it really quick in the Instant Pot. It was like 20, 25 minutes, and it's completely done. So give both of these recipes a try. You're gonna be really happy with them, I promise. Comment below if you do try them and you do like them, um, or if you have any other childhood recipes that you'd be interested in figuring out how to make them uh, veganized. So I will see you next Monday with a brand new recipe and you enjoy the rest of your week. 
I'm gonna finish my soup and save this for later. Thanks for watching, see you next week.